Hey guys, welcome back to my shop. In this video, we're going to wrap up this Fadal uh, TRM conversion. I retrofitted it with a Centroid CNC Oak Control and DMM AC uh, servos. They're 1.3 kilowatt on each axis. I'm just going to give a brief uh, a walk around on the machine, um, point out a few things, and we'll wrap this up by cutting a test block to see how well the, the cuts are. So let's get started. Okay, let's start with the uh, console. The original Fadal console was where that piece of stainless is right there. It was a box that would, would stick out about, uh, about six inches. And over here there's the e-stop button on the left side of the monitor and a USB port. Uh, these are keyboard trays that I make up. I just bent out of sheet metal. That is a resistive touchscreen monitor. Go around to the back. This just happens to be a very heavy duty uh, visa mount um, used for TVs basically. Uh, I think I got that from monoprice.com and it worked out very well. This is a 3D cap. It's modeled after the Centroid servo uh, cable strain reliefs. Uh, works great. So I just, I just uh, 3D print it and then I notch out what I need to get uh, cable entry. Helps keep the chips out. Up top you'll see two antennas. The one on the right is for Wi-Fi and the one on the left is for the Centroid MPG. Let's go around to the back of the cabinet. Um, this machine uses air pressure. Um, the air pressure is for two things. Power draw bar, release button, and the spindle has an air curtain. Air, a gentle amount of air is always flowing through the spindle when the spindle is running to keep it clear. And when air runs through a spindle, you cannot use that button. There's an interlock in there, and we'll go over that in the cabinet here shortly. This is a linear rail machine. You can see it right there. This is the z-axis. You can see the uh, y-axis down there. Um, it has a chip. It has a chip tray. Um, it's everything drops on either side of the uh, the machine down into the chip tray. There you can see the y-axis servo and then up above you can see the z-axis servo. The z-axis has a brake on it because this is a ball screw and linear way machine. Uh, there's not enough friction to keep that head up so uh, when the machine is not running and is in the ready state, the control has got the, the servo energized and the servo is holding the z-axis. However, if there's a fault or when you power down, that brake uh, automatically locks and keeps the, the uh, z-axis from dropping. Now let's go over the inside. Lenovo Tiny M92P uh, CNC computer. Power supplies are ones for the uh, tiny, the other ones for the monitor. Those power supplies are uh, international standard. They'll take 110 or 220. This cabinet is wired for 220 volts. Uh, Automation Direct Durapulse GS3 sensorless vector drive. Um, I, they're a little bit more expensive, but I tend to use them. They're reliable and they work very well. Down here's the, the TB1 terminal block. Uh, this is, there's two 20 volts here. The first three terminals are one phase. The second three terminals are another phase. Third three terminals are ground, uh, 24 volts. Um, and then commons are, are right there. Of course, there's the centroid oak. This is a true closed loop motion controller. And then we'll start up at the top. We have, uh, I, I tend to use fuses. It's not the most convenient but um, I like fuses because they tend to trip faster than some breakers. The fuses on the right are for the servo drives. Fuses on the left there are for the uh, VFD and the spindle motor. These second set of fuses are control power for the uh, oak and uh, this auxiliary 24 volt power supply which is used to power the uh, solenoids. Um, for the power draw bar and the air curtain. This second set of uh, Fuses is for the logic power for the uh, DMM Dyn4 servo drives. 
the logic power from the servo drives drops through an EMI filter and then the EMI filter feeds the uh, logic power directly. So when the control powers up, the logic power to the drives powers up as well. This is the drawbar spindle air purge interlock. Basically when the spindle runs, this, this uh, relay energizes and it turns on the pneumatic solenoid for the air curtain where air will go around that spindle and keep the spindle clear. And then when the spindle is off, this goes back into its normal state and then it allows the use of the, uh, the uh, drawbar button on the side of the head. Of course, this is the e-stop relay. This e-stop relay is controlled by an oak and by the e-stop button. When the Centroid software is in its ready state, that, that contactor is energized and is, is providing power for the motors of the Dynfor servo drives. That comes in on R and S on the drives. L1 and L2 is logic power. That comes from the EMI filter, which is fed from these two fuses here. Okay, there is, this cabinet had a very large EMI filter. So incoming power, 220 volts, uh, 30 amp single phase come into the switch. Then that drops into this EMI filter, and then the EMI filter feeds the bank of fuses up in the upper right corner. There is a resistor here, and that is not a braking resistor for the VFD. That resistor is tied to Z, and it was required because what was happening is as the uh, as I was lowering the Z every once in a while, that almost predictably the uh, the Z axis drive would fault. And I talked to DMM Technologies, and because uh, of the ball screws in linear ways and going down, it, re it needed a regenerative braking resistor on that. And sure enough, I put that 100 ohm resistor in there and that cured all the problems. So the Z-axis is working very reliably now. So that's an overview of the cabinet. Again, there's the Y-axis servo, Z-axis servo. Um, I added a um, this machine had a nozzle for a misting system, but the tank was gone, so I added the, uh, it's basically a household uh, water filter um, canister, and then um, two, two regulators, one to regulate pressure in here, usually about 10 PSI is good enough for the fluid, and then this is to regulate the uh, air blast to the nozzle. Okay, there's the uh, X-axis servo. Um, because that table travels in through the saddle, those connectors had to be placed upward. Currently, DMM Technologies has no solution for these uh, MS connectors, military spec connectors. Okay, let's go ahead and cut a test block and see how it turns out.
Now let's take a look and see how it turned out. Nine 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 nine. Nine 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 nine. One two four nine five. One two four nine five. One eight nine nine. 1899. Okay, so that was a brand new end mill that I put in the machine for the test, and I haven't turned on any cutter comps, so the end mill is likely cutting just slightly oversize uh, of its half inch. So you would adjust for that in the control. But the point of the test block is when you measure it in multiple directions, the value should come out the same. That tells you that you have the machine tuned well. So yeah, overall it turned out pretty well. The machine was in excellent, excellent condition. Uh, let me show you what the uh, backlash is on it. Okay, on X there's three tenths of lash compensation programmed. Y there's four tenths of backlash compensation and Z there's one tenth of backlash compensation. Okay, I know there are Fadal critics out there that might argue um, that the Fadal was really good and in its day it was really good. But uh, to me, at the end of the day, this is basically a, a bed mill. It is a bed mill built by Fadal and it was made in the good old USA. And uh, by putting the centroid control on it, I think it gave it a more useful life, easier to use control, more modern control. You can use USB sticks, you can use Wi-Fi, connect to your network. And the control is built by Centroid, a company that's had over 30 years of CNC motion control experience. And hopefully this machine will give the next owner a lot of enjoyable use in the future. All right, until the next time, we'll talk to you guys soon.